Okay, a uh, couple of things that I, I, I heard. Uh, first off, yes, meetings are open. That's, that's if you, you, you gotta get the pamphlet, uh, how, how to conduct the council meeting. New meeting guidelines. New meeting guidelines, okay. So, uh, and just so you know, the big part about it is you don't, miss, you don't discuss financials. It's, you don't go through all the bills and all that. Right. That's done at the officer meeting. Okay, that's done the second meeting of the council. <clears throat> That's the planning. That that second meeting is you do all the planning. You figure out, okay, John, are you going to bring the hot dogs? John, are you, uh, Steve, are you bringing the buns? And who's bringing the sodas? That's when you do that. You don't do it in your business meeting. Don't have those conversations in those business meetings. It's all about, you know, what you want to do. What's your goals for the year? Um, you talked about that form. Let me give you another form. How many of you have a, 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 a fraternal planner? <laughs> Okay, do you use it? Yeah. I'll tell you which is the best document. You hooked up to the website? You can. The best planning, the best form to use for planning your council activities, your SP7. There you go. That is what I tell them and it's my train. Your SP7 form is your best planning document because what you do is you. You write down in all those categories what you're going to do for the year, right? So it's in your you're you're filling out your SP seven form. You're doing it now in July, not it's in June of next year. <laughs> so you fill out that SP seven with your activities that follow faith, family, community, and life. And then, and then you what you do is. When am I going to do membership drives? Because every event is a membership opportunity, right? So you're going to be doing that. So make sure you have all your, your stuff available for those events. You know, you talked about, you asked about your other ministries. Invite those other ministries. We do it all the time at my parish. So yeah, that, that SP7 uh, is, is your... <clears throat> I have a question. Yes. You said an open meeting. Generally, during our council meeting, that's when we approve our budget, our yep. housing thing. Yep. So if we have invited guests, we can't accept. Yes, you can. Really? Approve our Absolutely. budget? They just don't have a say. Oh. It's not a secret. No, we're not a secret anymore. This is where they will know that you don't have money or whatever. <laughs> just like is, is the exemplification of charity, unity, and fraternity, is that a secret? No. 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 It's not a secret anymore. The only thing, to be honest, the only thing that they haven't caught up yet, the only thing that's still a secret in the Knights of Columbus is the fourth degree exemplification. But I think that's going to change. So the guy that so, for the meeting that should say that if you are not an abolished member, you <coughs> have to step out any part. No. If, if the council okay. agrees to let that individual stay in the chamber, they stay in the chamber. My wife has attended our business meeting before. There's something. Can we see that in the guidelines? So let, let, as soon as he gets, I'm going to walk you through some very, a very important part of this, this whole website. Well, that's something new that we have. Never it's, it actually it isn't that new. Yeah. That's the whole thing. It's not that new. It's been it's been in existence for at least three years that I'm aware of. <coughs> so do we still check the membership uh, card when we have a meeting or no more? So the member who's the, who's the financial secretary in here? <laughs> I can't get into work. No, okay. uh, All right. So the membership card is changed. Huh? There's actually only once you're going to find <coughs> FS's once they Supreme gets it all done, you're only going to have one signature on that membership card. What's the FS, right? Nope. Supreme Knight. The Supreme Knight. <coughs> the only that's the only <coughs> signature you're going to require to have on, and it's going to be automatically put on on the membership card. I, I just checked the, the website a couple of days ago. It's still not quite there yet. 
But that's a change. That's another change. So do you need to show the membership card? You only need to show it if you're going to the annual meeting of the state convention. You need to show your membership card. But not on a regular But not on your regular meeting. business meeting. Oh, interesting. Boy, that's a lot of changes. <laughs> so let me ask you, uh, who has who has had a business a, a council meeting and someone that came in and said, I'm a brother knight, and they showed you a membership card that's not that you didn't issue? Oh yeah. It's an online membership card. Yeah. An online member can come to any council meeting that he desires to attend. He's got his own membership card. You cannot deny it. Can he be belong to a uh, council? Certain council. Uh, He's already a member of a council. He's a member of the Supreme Council. Oh, I see. So the online so the Supreme Council. Supreme Council. Correct. And, and technically, just so you know, technically he belongs to the state of California if he's here. He's in our council, the state council. Technically. But not particularly in no. the uh, specific council. So what do you want him to do? He's there at your council. Welcome him. Welcome him. Invite him to the next event. Invite him to the next event that your council is doing. And then invite him to join your council by doing the exemplification of charity, unity, and fraternity. Once he does that, he, you now get credit for him for your star council. <coughs> That's a different form. Oh, no, it's not. There it is. So this is your SP7 form you just fill out. What am I going to do? And when am I going to do it? Yes. Fill them out for the whole year. Faith, community, life. You don't turn it in yet. You turn it in when, when you're all done at the end of the year. But this is your fraternal planner. And gentlemen, full disclosure, that's exactly <coughs> what I did when I became Grand Knight. At the first meeting, I held that up and I said, this is what we're gonna do and when we're done, we'll be a star council. And I just, when we do one of those programs, I check it off. And when you do one of those programs, you do go in and do the program forms, and like Ken did, or talked about earlier, and you fill that form and turn it into Supreme. Yep. It takes like 10 minutes. It takes and like 10 minutes. You guys find it right here, kfc.org, <coughs> in the four members section. Bingo. My brothers, anybody can go into this Supreme website and go to the four members, that red box, and you get all this information, a plethora of information. Yep. It's just amazing how much information <laughs> the has put on there that anybody, my wife has got in here. <laughs> it's for anybody, guys. It's for anybody. <coughs> We're not secret. We're not a secret society. And so you can see everything is on it's PDF, or you can download all these, all these manuals, that the one I talked about, the, uh, the protocol manual, the, uh, right. the uh, uh, everything is on here. Just click on, if you click on four members. Yep, I will. So, guys, here's the four members. So you click four members, this is the page it takes you to. And you've got all these portals here of information. So I'm going to go to forms. And I'm going to scroll down. SP7. SP7. Now I pulled up to a PDF because the online method, I'm not, I don't have the capability right. to log in and do it online, okay? But there you go. Boom. <coughs> Print it out, just hand right in what you're gonna do. That's your calendar. And, just, and every every officer's meeting, you go over it. Uh -huh. You just review it. So what, what's next? What's next? What's next? And gentlemen, where it says signature, Whenever it's asking you for a signature on an online document, don't print it, sign it, scan it, okay? All you need to do in the PDF fillable form, put your membership number. That's your signature, okay? Again, kfc.org, click on the red box for members, and you're in. You got a wealth of information. Uh, let me touch on something else that was mentioned. Uh, you called it a corporate mass. 
we, I, I've known it as a corporate communion. Uh, that's another term that's used. So how many, how many grand knights are here? Grand knights. So how many of you grand knights have had your officer's installation already? Just one. All right, for those of you who didn't raise your hand. Yeah. When you get your officer's installation scheduled, try to do it on a Sunday. And do it at like your 10 or 11 o'clock mass, the one where there's always a break in the afternoon before their evening mass. Do it at the 11 o'clock mass. Do it, do it after that mass. But that mass becomes your corporate communion mass. Okay? So now you've got everybody, including the parish who normally attends, let's say it's your, it's your 11 o'clock mass, whatever it is. <clears throat> all of a sudden, everybody that comes to your 11 o'clock mass sees all these guys and their families coming to this mass. And, and uh, I like what Alex was talking about earlier. We just did, Jim was there. Yeah. <clears throat> when I did my council, my council, we installed the officers after the 11 o'clock mass at St. Gregory the Great. Not only did we have all the uh, corporate communion and all the families, I had all the state officers there. Wow. <clears throat> right, Jim? Yep. So here we are, Knights of Columbus, and so the lectors were Knights of Columbus. All the ushers, or, their, or, or they were either Knights or family members of Knights. The Eucharistic ministers were either Knights or family member of a Knight. Uh, music director and the choir were either, the music director is a Knight, and his wife is the lead singer. Plus the choir, you know, family member of Knights of Columbus. Uh, the altar servers, Knights of Columbus. That was me and Carla. The, the liturgical coordinator, Knight of Columbus. The deacon, Knight of Columbus. The celebrant, Knight of Columbus. That whole mass was nothing but Knights of Columbus. And those that came that were not knights saw who we were. What were we? We were men and families of faith. What were we? We were doing, yes, we did a Delta Church drive that, that same, same day. But we were there showing who we are first and foremost, Captain. <coughs> have some water. It's on your chair. Good term. Epi, it's on his chair. Epi, it's on his chair right here. I brought it up for <coughs> Anyway, do a corporate communion mass and have as many nights as possible there. I mean, it, it was very, I thought it was pretty cool myself. And then what did we do? We had a barbecue after the installation of officers. We had a barbecue for the parish to just say thank you. And who were the servers? <laughs> nice. No, the state officers were, not, were the servers. Oh. <laughs> I put them to work. Yeah, Steve, Steve <laughs> and Steve Bolton was barbecuing. I had past state deputies and all the state officers. They were in their aprons, in these mission shirts, uh, and we were just having a blast. But yeah, invite Chester. Uh, worthy state deputy, um, when we installed our officers, our worthy district deputy informed us that we could no longer do substitutions or stand in for any <coughs> That's correct. Right, could you expand on that? Luke? That is correct, great point, yes. Thanks. So what we don't want to do, remember you're installing an individual to an office, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, let, so let's say Ken White is going to be the, the Deputy Grand Knight, uh -oh. right? He's the Deputy Grand Knight, and here we are to be installed, but Ken's not there. Do I have Epi fill in for Ken? No. No, no substitutions, because Epi's not Ken. Ken's the one being installed as the officer, not Epi. So are you, you come in and say, oh, I'm Ken White? No, you're not Ken White. No, we don't do that anymore. No more substitution class for you. What will happen if there's a... a <coughs> I'm sorry? If there's what a, will happen if there's an absentee in the installation? You just don't install the office. Do you install it by the later on? Later on. Yeah. Oh. Do it later on. I'll give you a great example. So at the... <coughs> uh, when, I, when we held the recent uh, district deputy, or, uh, organizational and training meeting, I installed all the district deputies, okay? If a district deputy was not there, 
I didn't install him. I didn't have somebody else fill in for him. No, I'm coming, now we're coming here. Let's, for example, SoCal chapter, I installed the officers and any district deputy that wasn't there. Okay, they still need to be installed as an individual. It becomes the level. Uh, yeah. Who is going to install them? <clears throat> the district deputy is responsible for installing them. There's an absentee that you call the, the, the district deputy. Correct. The, the district deputy office. should be coming to every one of your meetings. I'd like to know if he doesn't. I will tell you. Don't, don't yeah. wait to put that officer to work. He's already been elected. Right. He doesn't have to wait till he's installed. Right. Okay. That, that's correct. He has been elected already. So one July, he's taken office. It's just the formality of installing him. Just to give him a warm and fuzzy. Yes, sir. <laughs> if, an officer, if an officer can't be at the installation, is there a cutoff date that he has to no. be installed by? Or no. Okay. No. Uh, no. I mean, to be honest, guys, there's been guys that missed our installs. They've never had it again because they're too busy. Don't out. worry about it if he's not there. Yeah, don't worry. It's not, I mean, if he's not there, that's his loss, mm -hmm. not yours. <coughs> so, yeah, my brothers, it's, um, yeah, don't, don't worry too much about the technicality side of it. What we really want you to do is go to work. We want you to go to work doing God's work. Okay? And first and foremost, we're Catholics. And, you know, we're blessed to have priests and bishops that, that are just wonderful to be around. And we got, we're blessed right now in this room to have one of the best knights in the order, in Father John Grace. Sitting right over there. Yeah! He's kind of shy. <laughs> <laughs> but no, you know, that's what we do. You know, and like you said earlier, I think when you go to your, your mass, wear your badge, wear your shirts, be proud of who you are. As a Knight of Columbus, if you're if you're an altar server, elector, whatever, make sure you're up there wearing your badge. Everybody sees me when I'm lecturing. Boy, I got my badge on. Uh, if I'm Carl and I are altar servers, we both have our badges on. Carla wears her badge proudly as well as I wear mine proudly. Uh, yeah, everything that you do at the parish, make sure that that people know who you are. Make sure, that, don't be afraid of who you are as a Catholic. And definitely don't be afraid of who, what you are as a Knight of Columbus, because that's the other part of going to work, is doing the works of mercy, doing the works that St. Michael talks about in chapter 25, verses 35 through 39 or whatever, <clears throat> right? Uh, do the works, do the works, and invite others to join you, like Ken said. Invite the other ministries to come and, and help you with whatever it is you're doing. Uh, our rosary ministry helps us with the, with the adoration and, and rosaries, you know? <clears throat> so how do you, how do you ask your parents to receive you? Because there are these corporate masses that you're talking about, because we haven't done that. Corporate masses. Just, just, ask, just ask Father. Father, can we do a corporate mass? In one of our masses, mm -hmm. okay. And it's not a special mass, it's just the regular mass. Just a regular mass, <laughs> yeah. And they ask that what we ask is reserved, yep. like a section for your council. That's it. That's all it is. It's basically on you to get your council there. So. I still have some questions. Uh, yeah, sure. The, the online uh, uh, recruit. Okay. Let's say uh, if I invite my brother and he's in the Philippines. Yep. Can he go in online and uh, register as uh, <coughs> members of uh, our council also? Let's <coughs> say uh, Council 60 of Europe. Of course. What's that? It's online. So, so when, when you go into online membership, so the way this works, um, it says become a member online Become an online member for free. So the individual, like your brother, uh -huh. doesn't matter where he's at, uh -huh. will go online and he'll start putting down 
The first thing they ask of, the first, <laughs> select state and province. So he's probably gonna put the Philippines, uh -huh. right? So he's gonna put down everything about his name and everything, uh, and by the way, it's free. The promo code is Blessed McGivney. <clears throat> Keep scrolling. Can't seem to scroll. There you go. I'm not a robot. <laughs> okay. And then when he, when he fish, fish, fill in all that to proceed to join, he's going to get a, an email. That individual will get an email from Supreme uh -huh. because they want to verify that he's doing this. Uh -huh. And then once once he does that and he will continue doing it. And he'll join online. So. It's gonna route everything to the Philippines. Correct, that's the issue. It's gonna route everything to the Would Philippines. Would be in a virtual space? So when he gets here or whatever, he can join your council there. Can, can we claim him, he's a member of our council? It's gonna be kinda hard. Uh, that'll be hard. Live here. Uh, okay. That'll be hard. Chester. Worthy State Deputy. Uh, we had had a situation like that too and have been told by Supreme that the online membership was only available in the United States. Have they expanded that since then? Ooh, I don't know about that. Uh, I have to ask that question. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'll find out. I have one guy who joined last uh, a year ago. Yeah, he joined uh, through online. From the uh, Philippines? The Philippines? He joined, yeah, he joined through online in the Philippines. So. What I, is I, 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 so he did join online yeah, in the Philippines. Both so available, okay. And I was the proposer. Okay. And that's the other key. <laughs> Make sure that he, that, and this is for everybody. When you invite somebody, notice I didn't say the word recruit. When you invite somebody to join online, make sure that you give them your membership number because they're gonna ask that information, who's a proposer, and you wanna make sure you get credit for that, for that individual, okay? So yeah, online membership. Let me, let me now let's so focus on just- yourself as a proposer for your brother. Uh -huh. And then you'll get stuff so let me put would, the Philippines would, would aside. Would that be uh, also counted as a uh, our council no. recruit? No, no, you won't. Uh, uh, until he's officially on your roster. Right. Oh, okay. So let me let me talk about now. Put the Philippines aside. Let me just in general talk about online membership. Online membership is is probably uh, last year probably ninety percent of the members that joined the Knights of Columbus joined online first. That's how impressive online membership is. So much, so impressive that Supreme decided to continue on with free online membership. Uh, they just haven't told us for how long. They just said, well, it's there now. So we're promoting it. <laughs> we're promoting it. <clears throat> Somebody has inside information. <coughs> that is super secret squirrel stuff. Can't talk about it. <laughs> Anyways, all I can say, guys, is what have you been hearing? We need to get off to a fast start. There's a tool to help you. Okay, once the start's over, what does that tell you? Yeah. Yeah, don't wait. Please don't wait. Uh, so, it, when, when do you, when, so who's got a membership drive schedule? Show of hands. You should all have your hand up. You know why? Because every day is a membership drives. Every day is a membership opportunity. You know somebody that I don't know. You know somebody that's not a knight yet. We call them natchez, not a knight yet. You you know somebody. So all I'm asking of you guys, each one of you, how many we got in the room? You said 14. 14? I expect 14 new, new members by the end of the week. 18. No. <laughs> it's that easy because all you got to do is Show that your 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 friend that goes to mass with you, not a knight yet. Show him how to join online. He becomes a knight. So it's that easy. Don't be afraid to, to just invite somebody to join the knights. Come, hang on, Alex. What is it that we? One of the things that well to motivate our council is we should have every year the incentives that the state gives. Is it?
get out already because I tell them you better work early so you get to have the table to yeah. get the barring at the counter yeah. or something. Yeah. The, so. incentive, the incentive is great. So there are incentives. Uh, and uh, you, I haven't published them yet for, for finalizing, but it's going to be as simple as this. Uh, you bring somebody in, you're going to get a gift card to Night's Gear. It's as simple as that. I mean, the, the, the more you get, the more the council gets, and all that. You know, are we doing barbecues? Yes, we're doing barbecues again. Okay, so all of those big incentives are still going to be around, but the real incentive is you're helping father. You're helping your pastor bring people back to church. You're helping father get people to recognize the fact that they are receiving the Eucharist the body and blood of Jesus Christ when they come for communion. That's the incentive, to be honest. It, it's very simple, very simple. You had, a, you had your hand up, good question. No, I got all that after that That's last right. question. <laughs> okay, so yeah. Um, so what else? Those are my topics. Very simple stuff, my brothers. So I got my question to uh, Brother Ken. Mm -hmm. Since uh, one night, can you turn on the light? Please, thank you. So, I don't want to ask our state deputy because I know you have a commitment at 2 o'clock. So, I'll just submit my question to Brother Ken and to all of you as well. So, at 4 30 today, we'll be having a Delta Drive. Uh, our Delta Church Drive uh, with my council. Our uh, final financial secretary is here too, my brother Tom. So here's my question to you. Do you want to see Brother Ken uh, in action doing Delta Drive? I want him to say yes if I say, okay, can you go? <laughs> see you. So I can't, I can't my question is to you first. Do you want to see Brother Ken to do the Delta Drive. Come on, guys. Same for question. So, the, this, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't, uh, obviously, you're not reading my emails. <laughs> but but uh, this, is, this is what's happening, okay? Uh, uh, the installation of the uh, so called uh, chapter officers will be done tomorrow, okay? But we use that opportunity to do the Delta Drive as well. And then here's a very good friend and very good mentor of us asked me the question is, hey, use me, I'm, I'll be there just like Friday. I said, hey, let's do Delta Drive, a Delta Church Drive training. So that's why we have this. So again, uh, we will be doing all the masses, uh, vigil mass, which is today 4:30 uh, tomorrow 6:30 mass 8:30 8 9:30 and 11 o'clock 9:30 mass is Spanish okay so we plan together with my council with our chapter officers we planned about it we have actually assigned some uh, brothers to make some announcement just in case but Last two days ago, after 6 30 mass, you know, I, 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 I asked Father Andrew, our incoming uh, chapter chaplain, I said, Can you announce the 11 o'clock mass, uh, the pulpit announcement? You know what he said? I oh, will do all the announcement starting Whoa. Saturday. And he's also Brother Knight, you know, he's, uh, he's our incoming, you know. So, my question to you, do you wanna, again, see how our brother can do the, the um, Delta Church trial, yeah, starting to today to and tomorrow. I can't see her today. I cannot be at 4.30, I'll be at every On tomorrow? So, so um, good. Or the green nights. There you go. So I think the answer is they're gonna come and watch you. Yeah. 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 Tomorrow. So we'll be here tomorrow too, from 6.30, Eight, There's four eight o'clock, uh, nine thirty is the uh, Spanish. I need more volunteers, you know. I need more volunteers that Spanish to, you know. Uh, 
So, so my brothers, before we break, Father, do you mind saying something? I know you've been very uh -oh. quiet. is something that has not been emphasized very much in the night. You know, the time when uh, I, was, I worked in the Supreme Office for a couple of years, and uh, I said straight to the Supreme Knight's face one day that I didn't see any spirituality working here in the Supreme Office. And he told me that it would take a minimum of five years for any major thing in the Knights of Columbus to go right from the top and get right down into, into the council, functioning of the council, take a minimum of five years. Keep that one in mind. It has taken practically 10 years. But now I find there's a complete change in the attitude uh, towards the spirituality. And that's where we must, be, we must begin from there. Every night must begin from there, right from your spirituality. That's where it works. If you haven't got that, if that's not first and foremost in your in your in your attitude, in your mind, then you've missed the point. What is the uh, what's the main the main booklet that we have nowadays? What what is it called that uh, directs us in all our, our actions? You you will have it come out. Faith. 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 What is it? Faith. 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 And we've got to be very conscious of that. Please, that's the only point I want to make to many, many things I could talk about. But that's the one thing that I want to say to you, that, and all of you at Grand Knights, make sure that that is part and parcel of your council. It must be part and parcel of your council meeting, of your officers meeting. What about your, your chaplains? Do you all have a chaplain? Yes. Who functions? Yes. They all work. Sometimes they don't. <laughs> Sometimes they don't know what to do. Well, we're doing something about that. I'm starting on something this year. I've already started it uh, to make contact with every single chapter in the state, the whole state. And we're going to do something about that to help them to know exactly what they should do, what they can do. Uh, that's going to be something that we're making contact with all the chapters this uh, during this year. We've already sent out, sent out a letter to them. Uh, so please involve, include, drive in your chaplain, whatever. Make sure and try and get him to all your meetings. He doesn't necessarily have to stay for the whole meeting. You know that he, sometimes he can't. He has many different, especially if he's a pastor. Uh, which is, makes it even more difficult uh, that he has to, to touch on, on every facet of the, of the parish. But if you can get him to come even for 20 minutes of your council meeting, whether it's the, the beginning, the middle, or the end, whatever time he can come, and give him the opportunity to give you some spiritual uh, instruction not just talking, giving about history, this, that, or the other, what's going on in the parish, but some, some actual spiritual instruction, direct spiritual instruction, and that should be part and parcel of every one of your council meetings. If he can't come, 
then you're going to have to have, what about a, a deacon? A deacon, they can be great spiritual directors, spiritual advisors. Get them to, to, to do something specific if you have a, if you have a deacon in your, in, your, uh, in your council. Or somebody, could be the man like myself, who could be the, uh, um, one of the other members, who would prepare something but have some spiritual input in every single council meeting. Right? I know it's, um, I've heard it said, a uh, chaplain may have said, oh, oh, oh. we don't have a chaplain power to in the Nancy and officer. What, what, can, what does that mean? What do I have to do? How about, if you can, if you can come to our council meeting, it's good. If you can't come, it doesn't matter. Excuse me. Excuse me. It does matter. It does matter. Yeah. So that don't ever make that statement, do please. But I invite him to every single council meeting to come. That he wants some spiritual advice, some spiritual instruction from him. Um, and uh, <coughs> there, uh, there's, there's like plenty. It's <coughs> even in dealing with that, there's the faith in action. There, there's so much stuff in that, that that can be done and through that the chaplain can do and help you with in, in your council meetings. But please, I want that to be your basis of yourself. How you some I've heard that some nights say they say, oh, well, you go to mass like yeah, yeah I go well, maybe once or twice a month. That's not who we are. That's not who we are. A knight is a practicing Catholic, not just a practical guy. Is a practicing Catholic, which means that you know what the commandments of the church are, you know what the rules of the church are, you know what the church is, and you're present there every single Sunday without mistake, without fail. That's what we must be. So I'd like this to be brought into yeah, for yourselves as knights, whatever your position is, that we're bringing, that we're, that we're making the, the spirituality basis of everything we do. We work from there. And that's the example you're going to give people. And if people see that, they're going to follow you. If people know that you're a spiritual guy, and then we, we, we're not ashamed to say that. We shouldn't be. We are. We should be all spiritual people. That's who we are. That's who we profess in being that. That's our basis. So that's the thing I'm pushing back at this one, okay? I want to get that right down into your, in, not just down into your head, but down into your heart. And that's where we live, that's who we are, that's who we, that's the example that we can give to other people. So, there's a few words that I can just say to you. Thank you, Father. So, uh, uh, Father, can I ask you one more time? Yes. Well, we have uh, food to go. The reason why it's to go is uh, we still have to go with my uh, brother, brother Tom. We have to set up our uh, our hall for tomorrow. <laughs> so uh, we have food to go. Can you save? Uh, sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 In the name of the Father, Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Heavenly Father and gracious God, you you have been good to us in, in many ways. You provide many things for us. You provide food for us, given to us by different people. We thank you, Lord, for those who have provided it today. We we. Uh, we ask you, Lord, to bless it, to nourish us, not just spiritually, but nourish us physically as well today. So we ask you, Lord, to extend your hand and to bless this food as we say together. Bless us, the Lord, and these your eyes, which are about to see from the bottom to Christ our Lord. Amen. For Abedito. So again, thank you very much, Brother Kim, for coming. And the surprise. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. I have a strong hand. Guys, guys, I have one favor to ask of you.